In preparing my remarks for today, I plan to focus in, I hope, a rigorous and maybe slightly academic manner befitting our setting uh, about on the historical underpinnings of the United States Federal Trade Commission and our approach to data protection and data security. I want to explain how, or I wanted to explain how, in this brave new world of big data, the Internet of Things, social media, mobile marketplaces, and virtual reality, that the FTC acts to protect consumer privacy in a manner that ad adapts to changing technology. Yet, we adhere to bedrock principles of consumer protection, principles our agency has held at its core since its founding 100 years ago. 100 years ago? That sounded pretty impressive back in DC. Until it was pointed out to me that construction on the great gate through which I entered this morning was finished in 1516. <laughs> Section five of the FTC Act, which gives my agency the legal authority to go after companies that deceive consumers or treat them unfairly, an authority we continue to use today to protect consumers' data online, that was added in 1938. I am pretty sure the mattress in my hotel room is older than that. Now, for those of you celebrating the Magna Carta's 800th anniversary, history may seem a pretty grand word to use for my discussion of how the FTC has become the leading consumer protection agency in the United States and how our long record of consumer protection enforcement, policy development, and education have influenced our work on privacy and data security. But as Winston Churchill said, study history, study history. In history lies all the secrets of statecraft. Now, who am I to defy the British bulldog on his home turf? Besides, even though when measured in Magna Carta years, the FTC's history is beyond brief, I believe a quick review will give you a better understanding of how the FTC does protect privacy and where I would like to see the agency's efforts go in the near future. Now, the FTC derives its authority to protect consumers from an amendment to the FTC Act, the so-called Section 5, which was enacted a couple of years after Churchill first became prime minister, just to put it in context for you. Section 5 gives the FTC broad authority to provide remedies for consumers harmed by deceptive or unfair practices in the marketplace. It's a flexible statute that grants the FTC's consumer protection authority that changes as technologies and business practices change, an authority that dates back from the days of newspaper and radio advertising, but serves equally well in the era of connected devices, mobile payments, and facial recognition. Now, to protect consumers from deception, as was alluded to a little bit this morning, the FTC has long held that it would presume a company's express representations to consumers, as well as certain implied representations about a good or service, are material to consumers' deci decisions about whether to use it. We have brought hundreds of cases against companies for making deceptive claims in advertising. We have shut down scams that falsely promise to deliver credit repair, mortgage relief, business opportunities, and other services that, that in fact predominantly target vulnerable consumers. And we have been a leader in stopping robocalls and abusive telemarketing practices. Now, as consumers spend more and more time in the online marketplace, the FTC has moved its efforts to protect consumers there as well. A migration apparent from a brief look at our work on online companies' privacy policies. Now, consumers do want to know what information they are feeding to online services and what happens to the information once a company has it. This is the purpose that privacy policies serve or should serve. So it's essential that privacy policies provide information that is true and not misleading. The same goes for disclosures outside of privacy policies, such as disclosures in a user interface. The FTC's deception authority is a vital enforcement tool as consumers move to mobile platforms, connected devices, and beyond.